When Rolf mentioned what we have to build an ATP co platform in three years, I said, boy, that is a, uh, it's a go great goal. It'll be a great achievement for us to really be able to create that interoperability distribution network for all airlines. And then when he talked about the brand pillars, he talked about three things. He talked about reach. He talked about innovation. He talked about expertise. And that's how we're going to use in order to build this platform for the future for you. I was thinking about that, and I said, boy, in my, in my life, I also had an achievement that I also had to do when I was a young child, and it was one of my proudest achievements. This is my picture. This is with me with hair. This is June 29th, 1978. I got my picture in the local paper, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, for achieving a great goal, Eagle Scout. I was Boy Scouts, and it was an Eagle Scout, and you had a three-year process where you, had to win, where you had to earn this award. And you earned the award by getting merit badges. That's my sash. So you got 21 merit badges in order to do that, and you did an Eagle project. And that also had to do with a goal. We had a great goal that I had in mind. I wanted to be an Eagle Scout within three years. I had to do that through innovation, reach, and as well as expertise through the Boy Scouts of America organization. They, are, they were established in 1908. They're in a hundred and, I looked it up, a hundred and, oh sorry, 216 countries right now, Boy Scouts are, some kind of scouting, and there's 31 million people there. We had scout jamborees where we invited people all around the world to come and experience Boy Scouts America. Reach, we are a global entity, what that was. In the innovation side, I thought that was really interesting. There's one merit badge on the lower bottom, which is called Wilderness Survival. They give you a pound of hamburger and an orange, put you on a little island and saying, good luck with that. You have to make it through the night, build a lean-to, feed yourself with those two pieces of equipment. So my innovation was I took the orange, put the hamburger in the orange, started a campfire, cooked the hamburger in the orange, and ate the hamburger. I wasn't knowing how I was going to eat this, or this hamburger. Many people try to cook it on a rock. It doesn't work. So I was innovative. I at least ate. I don't know if it's safe you know, nowadays, but it was innovation. So they taught you innovation. And the next expertise is you need to collect merit badges. You need to collect 21 different merit badges in a lot of different areas and gain that expertise. That's what we're going to do at ATPCO. We're going to leverage those three brand pillars, innovation, expertise, as well as the reach in order to deliver the ATPCO platform of the future. That's the platform that Rolf introduced. I have a few more words in there. And I'm really going to focus on three main topics here within this platform, which is the part of the vision statement we talked about. But before I get there, I want to say we're not doing it myself. We do it with a team. Going back to my scouts days, there's a scout oath. Anybody in Boy Scouts that knows the scout oath? It starts out, on my honor, I'll do my best, do my duty to God and my country. And this is what I think the ATPCO people are. They are the most dedicated people trying to do their duty and do their best each and every day. And they're doing it not just for ATPCO, they're doing it for a worthier cause. They're doing it for the industry as a whole. They're really trying to a selfless set of people in order to do that. We've restructured the organization to be more lean, more agile, and more expertise and innovative. We're doing that through R&D. We created an R&D division that has a small team that is focusing on how to be more innovative. What's the next generation of ideas that we need to explore and exploit? We're establishing product teams where we have business and technology sitting side by side, day in, day out, working through the product portfolio and evolving those and making sure they're working in an agile, lean development methodology. And then we established rapid delivery where they already have implemented many, many monthly implementations for you in order to get some of these quick wins, low-hanging fruits out to the marketplace. So far, I think we made great progress and we're committed to do even more and deliver value faster. On the platform itself, Rolf mentioned the vision statement. And it really had three main components that I really am going to focus on. One is the smart connection, all content, all channels. So let's walk through that. On the platform itself, the all content, what does all content mean today? Well, it's beyond just fares. It's really all the content that is needed to describe in airline price and product or their offer in the NDC world. It includes fare and fare related data, includes taxes and service fees, it includes optional services and branded, and it includes rich media if you really want to be able to describe your product portfolio. ATP, we're committed to collecting all that content for the airlines. We're not starting from nothing. Fares have grown, 
Over the last five years, fares have grown 41%. As Rolf mentioned, we added another 10 million fares already to the database in 2017. So it's a continuing to be a growing item. Rules have also grown. They have grown 81% over the last five years as well, and will continue to add more and more content. On the service fees area, you can see there's 201 airlines now that have optional services with ATP Co. We have 94 airlines that have branded fare structure now with ATP Co. I challenge the airlines saying, if you are not filing optional services and branded fares with ATP Co today, you are losing an opportunity to make more money. It is a huge revenue opportunity. Delta Airlines recently reported in an annual report that moving to branded fares for them uh, generated $100 million in one quarter alone for that airline. And that's just the start of it, they said. So it is a huge opportunity. So if you're not there, please, please provide the content for those areas. On the product roadmap side, it's really heavily weighted on the optional services and branded areas. That is really the area of growth, and we want to create all the data elements that allow the airline to properly describe their product offering. In the first quarter, we're implementing an enhancement or an adoption of seats, which allows you to be able to tailor your seat pricing down to what they call a, uh, down to an individual level, a very individual granular level. We are working then in the second quarter on a rich media adoption. We have already established links in our optional services products so you can attach pictures, images, videos, and we will work on getting industry adoption for that process for the airline. So if you are an airline and you have a picture of any of your optional services or a video of any of your optional services today on your website, which I think most of you do, Provide that to ATP Co. We can link that with your optional services and branded fare data, and we can provide the links for you so it can be presented in the desktop in an efficient manner. For optional services, we're doing keyword searching and order security. We're doing some fare by rule definition and resulting fare class to create more fare products for you. In the branded fares in the third quarter, we're going to expand the number of brands. We heard that our current limitation of brands is not enough. People want to have more and more brands. We're looking to expand it up to 40 brands. Features by itinerary. How do you get the features down to an itinerary level? How do we create better upsell process? All part of the product roadmap for third quarter 2018. And last but not least, we're looking at how do we continue to improve the dual RBD validation in fare by rules. That's all content. That's for the airlines to be able to describe their product. Smart connection. This is establishing what we're calling the total product management uh, aspects for it. This gives the airlines the tools to put in all their content, so it's a content management platform. It's the tools to provide ancillary and, and fee content and manage the ancillary and fees. It's monitoring analysis. It's settlement services, bringing in the earned revenue aspects of it to how much you actually are earning in the marketplace after settlement. And it's also a sales data platform to see how much sales and tra attractions you're giving. We're integrating that into a single platform and we're also extending that with the data platform services, which we call our engines. Smart connection is really the ability to have the smart tools or capabilities that the airlines need in order to manage the content, manage their information, in order to make sure it works properly in the marketplace. There are three main focus areas that we're looking at for over the next three years. Monitoring analysis tools, data platform services, and APIs. Let me walk through each of those. Monitoring analysis. We currently have market view. In 2017, the end of this year, it'll be introduced in the beginning of 2018, we're incorporating carrier imposed fees, one of the largest requested items to be able to have a consolidated fair rule merge with carrier imposed fees in a single screen so you can see all the different attributes that are attached to a fare, and that'll be in the new market view rolling out early 2018. Then mid-year 2018, we're going to integrate total price comparison and total price beta, which if you're not familiar with those products, that actually takes itineraries, schedule files, prices them out with all of the fares, rules, surcharges, and taxes, and gives the airline a total price calculation for a 180-day period for them and all the other carriers in the marketplace. So we're integrating that, that functionality with the market view so you can see all the detail of your fare rule with YQIR as well as see the total price and we believe that is the platform of the future. The airlines will now be able to work with how the consumers are shopping their services. They can see that same view and then we behind the scenes will try to create the way for you to manage the data and the content. That will be done through engine based products. 
We've been talking for the cu last couple of years, I mentioned about engine-based products. Our view in our engine-based products and what makes ATP Co. really unique is our expertise and our innovation in how you create an engine. We weren't just building a shopping engine, not to say that's trivial. We weren't just building a fair rule merge engine. We were doing more. We were creating an engine stack that can take the raw data, the fares, the rules, the service fees and taxes, turn it into products, which is the combined total price, as well as take the products and turn them back into the fares, rules, and service fees. We believe that that technology will be the unleashing mechanism for the industry on how to better manage their content. They'll be able to move to a product management prospect where they're working at a total price and be able not to have to worry about the details of all the data underneath because we can convert it. There's a couple of uh, prototypes we actually are doing right now that in this area. One, first of all, I'll go to the top one. We are having fares and rules, and we have a fair rule merge API that's now available that you can use and access in order to be able to see the fares and rules merge together. We have fares and fare by rule that are being used and piloted as part of a dynamic pricing offering. So we talk about dynamic pricing. One of the entities who we're working with is Pros, and they're looking to see how do we leverage fare by rule today in order to make that a dynamic price calculation in the marketplace, and then how do I take the dynamic pricing, turn it back into a fare and rule. So we think that will be a key unleashing mechanism to allow airlines to move dynamic pricing, but still have all content. And last but not least is the total price management aspect, what I said. In this new world, we would like to be able to have the airlines manage on a total price. And then when they say, this is the total price that I want, we behind the scenes will create some smarts and figure out what needs to change. There was a hackathon that we did, as, uh, as Rolf mentioned uh, recently and as uh, Beth mentioned, that they're having a showcase there. They did a prototype of that on a small scale where they took total price products and they found out what needed to be changed, alter a cat 12 within a string, a very detailed complex area, put the data in there saying what needed to be changed and updated the data online. Take a look at that, see if that's not the foundation of the future of how we want to manage and innovate better together. And the last one I mentioned is the area of APIs. For us, APIs is a broad thing. It's not just a simple request response, but it's any way you want to get access to your data. So here we have smart connections where we were enabling you to be able to connect this total product management system with an API, which is request to our engines or to our data. We're putting a huge investment in that, as well as user interface updates. So if you want to integrate the user interface and have a multi-platform session where you can integrate your user interface with our user interface, we are looking at that. Uploads, downloads are a big piece of that. We're creating more ex data exchanges of the fares and rule data and subscriptions are all part of the way you can get your access to your data. In the smart connections area, I mentioned some of these. Our implementations are market view with YQIR coming up in first quarter 2018. If you're a market view user, we think you're gonna love this enhancement. It's the biggest one that we've been asked to do. Fair rule manager rules, we'll do con continue enhancements to the user interfaces. Work unit rules upload API will be coming in the first quarter 2018 as well. We're piloting with a carrier on that. On the two, uh, second quarter is the integrated market view and total price calculation, and more APIs will be rolled out. And then in third and fourth quarter, we'll continue with mass updates, some optional services APIs, and then a footnote and total price comparison APIs if you want to integrate that into your own decision support system, as well as rewriting general rules. A lot going on in the platform for that total product management. Last but not least is how do you get it into all channels? We talked today about traditional distribution, new distribution, and how the airlines need interoperability between those so they can manage their content however they want, and then we can enable both traditional distribution to the points of sale that they need to get it out to, as well as new distribution capabilities as, and in order to make that work as well. Our subscriber base is growing. Traditional distribution isn't shrinking by any means. It is a growing trend. We have added new subscribers in the last 10 years that are taking more and more, and we'll talk to a couple of them actually uh, later today. Volumes are growing as well through traditional distribution. We are being told we should expect to have a tripling of the volume of fares that will be flowing through our traditional distribution ecosystems in the next three years. In 2017, we had projected an average daily we, uh, weekly, I mean average weekly subs record of 750 million uh, transactions each week. We actually had a peak day 
just this last week a 1.5 billion. So it is growing at a rapid pace. We think that's going to triple over the next three years, that there's going to be more and more content flowing through that traditional distribution. We talk about NDC. This is, uh, IATA has uh, done an update on their source of what they expect their NDC uh, progression is. They call it, uh, right now, on the airlines are in the early adopter stage. And we are there with you. We are helping you do your early adoption, test and learn, and are able to explore and exploit to see how NDC can work for you with some products and services in order to do that. By the end of 2018, they say there'll be 55 airlines that are going to be NDC cable. Right now, there's 45 that are capable in 2017. Uh, that are capable to do NDC transactions. So it is real. It's not just a, a, a theory anymore. It is real. It's out there, and it will grow. We are talking about NDC exchange. How do we help you enable NDC? We have established an NDC exchange with a partnership product with CETA, where we will allow the NDC sellers, people that could be airlines, could be agencies, it could be meta-searches, GDSs, OTAs, anywhere that they want to have NDC content, we are creating an API gateway in order for them to do that. And there will be access to the airlines, to all the suppliers of the services. They will connect to this NDC gateway and be able to connect once to us as an NDC gateway, and we will connect once to the seller, and we will do all the heavy lifting in between by doing message translation, schema translation, so that way an airline that wants to be NDC can implement one time, connect to us, and get access to the complete marketplace. And same thing for the sellers, they can implement one time, connect to us, and then they will get access to all the airlines underneath with a single connection, instead of doing these bilateral one-by-one -one connectivity. We think it's going to be a powerful enabler for the industry in order to help really grow and spur the NDC adoption. We are looking to start uh, with pilot carriers, and we will have carriers that will be going into production very, very soon, within the next month. This is going to be an exciting time. It's not just shopping, but it'll be shopping and order management and integrating with other industry partners and other entities in order to move that forward. So channel interoperability, getting in all desk points. We continue to look at the traditional distribution, doing product performances. As you can see, we need to continue to make sure that we can get the data out there at the right time, at the right place. And that means we have to continue to enhance our services to keep that up. On the NDC side, in the exchange, we have message translation already in production now. We'll have interlining, where the airlines, if they have an NDC gateway today, and you want to get interline transactions from your partner, we have use cases that we're testing right now that we think we're going to make it a very efficient process for you in order to be able to finally sell on your web all your partners' ancillary services and vice versa. So if you have an NDC gateway, contact us and we will help you show you how to use those use cases. In the second quarter, we'll do product performance enhancements again, more fair rule changes, more optimizations in order to make sure your data flows through. On the NDC exchange side, we'll do scaling to make sure it can scale to handle the growing volumes of NDC that's being projected. And we're incorporating airline profile. And I believe this is a key enabler for the airlines to help enable their interoperability. We have a concept where you'll have an airline profile, and it's already in production, with a carrier today and distribution system where the airline can say, this is how you can have access to my content. And this is where you're going to get good content for it. And this will enable them to be able to optimize and move the industry so we don't have to all be 100% NDC enabled before we can take that step. You can walk in it slowly. You can say, for these markets, these areas, this process, I still need traditional because I haven't built all those capabilities on my NDC side. For these markets, these areas, these points of sale, these ancillaries, I want to do NDC because it provides a better experience. It really is the bridging mechanism for this interoperability, and we think it's going to be a great enabler. And then last but not least is the NDC product en uh, uh, enhancements. We have instant cancels, same day effective date as target once. We know we need to actually ratchet up a little bit more the traditional distribution mechanisms to actually get an instant connection out there in the marketplace and be able to correct market errors as well as do same-day effective date for the international marketplace. Both of those will be drivers for us in the, th in the second half of the 2018. And last but not least, on NDC Exchange, we're doing the interoperability. We have some use cases to take data from our current traditional, turn it into NDC content, take the NDC content, turn it back in traditional, and that'll be done through the NDC Exchange. We have pilots working on there, and we think that's going to be a very key enabler. 
That being said, going back to my Boy Scout days, I think we are going to earn our badges. We will have, by the end of three years, our commitment to have all content through ATP Co, a smart connection, which is the total product management platform, and all channels and interoperability. And I really believe that with our innovation, our reach, and our expertise, we are the organization that will be able to do that for you all.